Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about my electric bike conversion. Uh, it's a standard track dual sport 2 bike with a 1500 watt rear hub motor kit added. I built this kit myself and I'm no expert, a total beginner but I watched lots of YouTube videos on how to do this and I tell you what, it was not difficult at all. <coughs> uh, all the wiring and stuff is self-explanatory. It all fits together. You can't really go wrong. So with the kit you get this rear hub motor, well the whole wheel, uh, minus the tyre. So you fit, you basically just fit in a whole new wheel and in that bag there is the controller and then the, the battery which you can buy separately or part of the kit and <clears throat> that's a uh, 17 amp hour battery 50 charges up to 59 volts and that actually can give you a, uh, about I can get 1700 watts out of that with that controller uh, which is plenty <laughs> and then you get the thumb throttle the screen and your buttons to control everything Uh, this isn't the normal screen position, uh, there is a stand that comes up here, uh, but I've done my own little job on that, um, <clears throat> so that it didn't stick up too much and get caught on any branches or anything, so I've kind of just cabled it, tied it down onto the stem there. Um, the other thing I've done with this bike is fitted a the largest disc rotor I could find, uh, 210 millimetres, uh, which gives me a bit more stopping power, uh, which you need when you're doing 35 miles an hour. Um, and also on the rear, um, I think that's a 180 millimetre rotor on there. And you really do need all the stopping power you can get, so... Uh, that's good, that works. <clears throat> uh, on the rear I fit this puncture resistant tyre. Um, it was the thickest one I could find. Now, because it's powered bike you don't need to worry too much about rolling resistance. Um, and I would just go for the most puncture resistant tyre you could possibly find. On the rear, specifically on the rear because if you get a puncture on this, <coughs> taking off that back wheel in, is really involved. There's no quick release on that. You have to undo cables um, and it, it is a, it's a bit of a job. It's more of a workshop job. That is not a roadside job. So you want to fit as puncture proof a tyre as you possibly can. Uh, on the front it doesn't matter so much because you've got quick release. Uh, so I've just got the tyre th that the bike came with, which is a kind of gravel tyre I suppose. Pretty good. Uh, the screen with this kit, uh, it's really good. It's really vivid. Um, gives you the battery information, which is very important. You can see it's at 58 volts at the moment. Uh, your, your speed in kilometres or miles an hour, uh, that gives you your average speed and your maximum speed. And down here it gives you the temperature, how many watts you're using uh, and your trip computer here which I've reset. Um, now the watts, uh, don't know if I mentioned earlier, but <clears throat> this m 
kit is rated between 1500 and 2000 watts and currently on this setup with this battery uh, I get a maximum of 1700 watts which is pretty good but it, it's not the 2000 watts that um, it, the motor is rated for in fact the motor could probably handle a lot more <laughs> than that as you can see it does display your overall uh, distance <clears throat> so in the last since I built this uh, at the end of February I think I've done 1156 miles with a total time of 69 hours in the saddle you can see that uh, and the only thing I've had to do in all those miles is change the front disc brake pads <coughs> which were <laughs> which I got through in well in about four months of owning the bike uh, but they're not expensive so that's fine um, everything else just seems to take care of itself oh, it's just a great kit and um, I just absolutely love riding this bike well as you can see I've chosen a black kind of theme to my bike and I think it looks pretty good it's subtle I guess it's not too showy offy so you know with regards to <laughs> riding this on the road um, it, it won't get too much attention as you can see I did I've painted the brake disc where the pad doesn't touch black <coughs> and this here is your torque arm uh, which <coughs> helps stop the axle spinning within your dropouts uh, because all of the power of that motor is going through that axle uh, so the nuts alone potentially won't stop the axle from trying to spin inside the dropouts and that if they do end up spinning that'll, that will that pretty much ruins your whole bike frame because you can't because once you've ruined the dropouts, uh, that's pretty much it. There's not much you can do about that. <clears throat> uh, but this is Torque Arm. I've, I've painted it uh, black, just fitting with the kind of black theme of the bike. Um, <clears throat> as for security, obviously you don't want to leave this bike unlocked anywhere. I've got a huge D-lock, uh, very heavy. Um, but, which I use when I go shopping but still I would never leave this bike anywhere with any sort of lock I, for any time I just I mean it's <coughs> it's so nickable <laughs> um, but the battery does come out um, it's got a lock here to keep it locked into the frame and if you unlock it you can just lift it out very easily and then slot it back in easily removable uh, there we go the battery's removed um, and the battery bracket just fits on with these allen key bolts which go into the holes for your uh, water, water bottle uh, carrier <coughs> um, I've actually added some extra washers under these I don't know if you can see that just to give it a bit more uh, strength and so the battery slides on and then fits onto these uh, connections here Let's just to show you on the back of the battery there they are it's a bit of information See, it says 52 volts. But as you saw earlier, this charges to 59 volts. 
um, which is a bit weird. Oh well, I don't know why it doesn't say 58 volt batteries. But anyway, I'm not complaining. Uh, so when I'm riding, uh, if I need a lap, if I need power, it just uses thumb throttle. It's quite a comfortable position. You can cruise along like that. Now, um, when you press the throttle straight down, you'll get full power. But there is a a small area about there where there are about four different speeds in between that small area. And um, it's a shame that they're not sort of spaced out more evenly, but you can, once you're used to it, quite subtly grab the very lowest power and then sort of hold it there. And then that will just give you some assistance in going up hills. Uh, so you're not just using the motor. You... Uh, the kit does come with this pedal assist sensor. It's got a little magnet on there. And that fits onto your, the crank of the bike. Now pedal assist actually would be quite good on this bike. You, uh, rather than just using the thumb throttle. That's the other part of the pedal assist sensor. Um, which I probably will fit one day. And because that would definitely help out in your general fitness because the the thing with the thumb throttle is it's just too easy to use it and on full power you are unlikely to be able to pedal at that speed anyway. Whereas with pedal assist you are just the motor is just assisting your pedalling rather than doing all the work itself. So you're kind of going to work harder um, rather than just being lazy like me and letting the motor do all the work. I try not to, but I can see how you could easily just use that bike just as an electric bike rather than a pedalling bike. Um, now... I did choose a hybrid bike, so it's not a mountain bike, and it's not a road bike, it's a combination of the two, um, which is probably a bit unusual, uh, and there probably are reasons why people don't convert hybrids, and I'm just guessing that maybe the frame isn't quite as robust or sturdy. Um, now certainly the dropouts or the distance between here and here on my bike was very narrow and this hub motor wheel is very wide so I literally had to stretch the frame out that way by a horrible amount to get to be able to fit this wheel in um, and it almost felt like I was weakening the frame by doing it by pulling it out that much now I've had it for well as you can see one that I've done a lot on this bike and I do keep an eye on um, sort of weak points which potentially might be here um, and here and just make sure this it's all in good neck that's just a bit of mud, I hope. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the danger with the not using a mountain bike, I guess, is that I'm putting <coughs> a lot more strain on... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> a lot more strain on the frame uh, by having to stretch it. Uh, but we will see what happens with that. <clears throat> Hopefully it doesn't just break when I'm doing 40 miles an hour downhill. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video and um, I'll see you again.